it's, it's a it's a Monday morning, and uh, we're going to continue my ramble from when we hit record. If you're watching, into, if you're listening to this one today, today's going to be a really good webinar. Uh, probably go for around forty five minutes or so. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on to get more value like this, where we're showing face-to-face trainers just like this small group here of awesome clients, how to get fully booked with ease and close the gap between certifications and success in the fitness industry. And it's that simple. Uh, new content, there is a new strategy on the portal, guys, um, called Birthday Baggies, I think, or Birthday Bags or something like that. Check it out. Um, and then from there... A new partnership we announced last week, just to, re- just to recap with FMA Strength Institute. Big organization that have gone through a big reset. Now, I, I have connected with the CEO of this, this company a while ago, and we've been talking, and uh, they're very good, but they're very small scale. Uh, but they're rebuilding their business, and I, I want to work with them because I can offer value to them. And that's something we talk about today as well, if I remember, about offering value, the importance of bringing value to the table, right? Um, but that's pretty much that. There's not, really, there's not really much else in terms of uh, new announcements yet, but there will be lots of changes coming very, very soon, guys. Um, as these four guys know, I've come straight off the back of a, uh, how do you want to call it? Two weeks, we're all rolled into one. I've been at two business events and haven't had a day off in a while so it's, there's going to be a lot of new value coming at you i'm going to continue now or kick start by we're going to go with ray then we're going to go with b so topic of conversation today ray we're going to talk about one percenters and it's not aimed at ray but we just spoke, spoke before we hit record so about everyone about one percent right we're going to talk about the one percenters that, e- that end up equaling 100 percent. but then what we're also going to do as well is we are going to talk about going into a second location because B here is more moving into a second location. So I'm going to tell her how to do that and what to do if you're going to move into a second location to get your business off to the best possible start. But first, we'll start about the one percenters and then Nathan and Fletch, anything that anyone's got questions about, always put your hand up, interrupt me because I speak a lot and I'd rather you speak with me, not wait for me, right? So that's that. Guys, one percent, right? Um, I'll just tell you what I, what I witnessed at the weekend. Anyone that's watching this might have been there. Um, I went to see Stephen Bartlett, Diary of a CEO. Has anyone heard of that podcast? Is it? Yeah. Is it? Yes. Okay. So Diary of the CEO podcast guy, Stephen Bartlett. Um, this guy, first and foremost, like a super, super, super successful guy. Um, people think that he's renowned for the, well, he's renowned for the podcast, but he's, he has his fingers in many pies and his, his president, his presentation was phenomenal. Uh, it was probably the best presentation I've seen from any form of motivational speaker or anything like that. Um, I mean, this guy like destroyed what I've seen from like Gary V and stuff like that. Um, but it was, he's young, right? He's younger than me. He's younger than Nathan, younger than Ray, a few years older than, than B and Fletch, right? He's, I think he's only just turned 30. Um, so with that, I think you are, you're younger than 30 Fletch, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I think you are. Um, so yeah, with that being said, get to the point. He talks about one percenters in his business that he has a team that constantly focus on doing, right? And these one percenters, he related it to his podcast and the podcasts, what they'll do is when they have a guest approved and announced and they're coming to the, to the pod, to the studio to record, they'll do a lot of background checks on these people. And he used Israel Adesanya. So I know Fletcher will know who that is. But Israel Adesanya, he's a Kiwi. I don't know whether you'd know him, but you know that you know Adesanya, the UFC fighter, right? No. He's one of the biggest UFC fighters in the world, right? And um, you might recognize him if you saw him. Now, they they interviewed him, and when he comes in, they were playing Nipsey Hustle, a tune called Level Up, right? And this is it's his favorite tune. And, and he walks into the office and he goes, oh, I love this, this tune. And he goes, I know you do, right? So they research sort of like what the, the the celebs that they interview listen to and stuff like that. They walk into the room, they celebrate, they actually celebrate. I can only imagine seeing stuff like this in person, changing the air freshener. They celebrate that shit in their office. The smell, the fresh smell in the room when you've got a celebrity coming in, of which Stephen Bartlett's a massive celebrity as well. His net worth would be far more than Israel Adesanya, but they've got someone coming in the room smells nice, right? They've monitored the performance. That, that little one percenter, right? It gets better performance, right, in their podcast. Then goes on to talk about the CO2 levels in the air, right? They found that when they did podcasts over like two and a half hours long, what they found is that they started to kind of fade out 
towards the last sort of 15, 20 minutes or whatever. And they changed the air conditioning system to bring in fresh air and sort of keep the CO2 levels higher. And they found that they got a 30 minute extra sort of productivity out of the webinar, out of the podcast, and that they could go on for longer, deliver more value. He also found out little things like this, that if anyone's watched the Diary of a CEO podcast, you know, the first 10 seconds will be like a really powerful clip from the two and a half hours. And it will say like, you know, Nathan, what is your biggest takeaway to get to fully book status? Well, my biggest takeaway would be this and it's, and it cuts, right? Those 10 second intros they found had like over a 30 to 40% increase on the listening duration of the audience. Now, if you're hosting anything on YouTube at that scale, you get paid a lot of money, right? Through YouTube advertisement fees, right? And basically, all of these things are an example. A 10 second segment on a three hour long podcast increased by a third, a third, 30% increase. This, does that make sense, guys? One percent, right? Now, I sat there as a one percenter and i'm not blowing smoke but i work with people that are not one percenters they're they're, they're they're very right brain thinkers they think very broad spectrum they think very quick no finesse just fucking do it right i'm more analytical numbers data driven why is it going to work how are we going to make it work who can we get to that's very left brain so you've got rash like very rash decision makers and calculated decision make makers right and left and basically, I, I sat there and, and thought about this. And in summary, guys, if you do not focus on the 1%, I, I don't care. It's not just because I'm biased as a left brain thinker. I don't give a shit. If you don't focus and sweat the small stuff, you're never getting anywhere in business at scale. Never. You're just never going to get there. Now, how do I relate that to your guys' situations? Well, Fletch, right? Recording school content. So I'm going to drop a message in the school chat and I'm going to actually give a date to you guys. I want to give you some accountability with getting this school shit done because otherwise the chances are what happens is it doesn't get done and you just go, fuck this shit. I just won't pay for it and we'll just leave it. <laughs> and that's pointless, especially if you've got people that are looking for it, right? And waiting for it. And then you're just like, oh yeah, we didn't go ahead with that because blame school. Nah, blame yourself, right? I want to give you guys accountability. So Ray, you're in there as well. Nate will get you in there as well. Cassie as well. Good to see you though. Um, I think... Cassie, would you like me to chuck you into the school chat? Let me know if you would like me to do that. Just say yes or just type something in the chat. But with that being said, an example would be if Fletcher's recording something on his screen and, he, and he's doing something and there's like some big freaking floating object in the back of the freaking screen and it's just there like this, right? And you're like, hey guys, welcome to uh, Anytime Fitness uh, School Portal, right? And you're like, what the hell is this big lump there, right? Do you know what I mean? That's a 1%. It's a 1%. I, I personally would, would, would I'm, a, I'm a perfectionist. I don't care what people think. I, I, am, I am a perfectionist. I'm, I'm not like OCD. I think it was you, Fletcher, was telling me at la last week the difference between the, the, what I've self-diagnosed myself and actual OCD, right? But I'm, I'm a perfectionist. I'm very, very neat. I'm very tidy. Like I was saying, I am positioning that plant there on purpose. It's not there, for, it's not there just because it's there. I will not sit like that. Look at the dip. Like, I don't know about your OCD brain, guys, but for me, that little pop of green, it looks good. And it, I like how my my broader shoulders, I'm nearly getting as big as Nathan now. You'll see me soon, bro. Um, big arms. But it, it positions nicely. Do you know what I mean? That globe is strategically positioned. I'm like, do you know what I mean? The point I'm trying to make here, guys, is that's a one percenter. A lot of people, again, even if you put a water bottle there, it just doesn't look good. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of times where I have to before hitting record remove a shoe that's there because my daughter's put it there, right? And I'm like, for fuck's sake, play doh and shit, right? You're <laughs> now for me, it, it's like, and even now here I can see half a basketball. I don't like that, so I'm going to move my arm there a little bit. Now this is getting a bit OCD, but anyway, you get the point. If you're recording content, think about the long play. So this is where I want to take this next, guys. You know what you know what one percent means now. Think about the long play of it. What happens when you do get right? We said to Ray before, like fifteen clients or so, and well done again for signing up seven sessions last week, Ray. Awesome work. Fifteen clients or so, and you have two of them doing check ins, right? Think about when you've got thirty or four now. It's four now, four now. So we doubled it. The one percenter 
The 1% has given you a 100% increase. Think about that. Often, guys, to summarize the 1%, the 1% are overlooked, not when you're doing the task, which is the recording and making sure the plant's visible or not. People over, over actually look the, the impact. Oh, shit. Well, I generated 10 leads rather than five. Hang on a second. That's 100%. You've doubled it. You've just doubled your check-in response rate, right? Think of that. A lot of people over, overlook it. But basically, guys, what you've got to realize is when you go and Fletcher has 120 people in his school that are constantly looking at this piece of shit in the screen, it does not look good. Like, does anyone like the way that that looks? Like, I, I mean, come on, you know? I'm starting to fill out this oversized hoodie nicely as I bulk, but like it doesn't look good when my arm's in the air, right? It looks shit. Like you've got to make sure, guys, that what you're doing is tight. The 1% matter. Does anyone have any feedback or anything on that where they think they could improve by 1%? There, there is something that everyone knows that they need to do here. So for Fletch, it could be recording. So for like to give Fletcher his answer, and I want an answer of someone here, guys. Tell me how you can, even in the chat or just speak, how you can improve by 1% this week. Not in the next hour, just in a week. 1%. Because when you compound that over time, and everyone knows what the word compound means, right? You go 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16. I think they did this domino analogy as well, where one tiny domino ended up knocking over a domino the size of a fucking house. And the difference in compounding was, I think it was like 16. A domino, a quarter of the size of your mobile phone can knock over a domino the size of a house if you compound it only 16 times. Think about that. That's when we relate this to business growth. I'm not going on a tangent here. We'll go back to like your 1% in a sec, guys. But think about it. Two signups every week at one session each, one session. Let's do the math on it, compound this out. So two sessions per week times four, times 12, I'm sorry. That's how many sessions you would have per week in 12 months from now if you signed up two a week. Can, does that make it, that, that's compounding. So with that being said, like Nay, I said, said to you before, like with, with our coaching now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep it simple. And I mentioned to the guys as well, you do not make mountains out of molehills here, fuckers. I'm telling you, it's that simple. Don't do it. It's been my favorite little like analogy recently. Don't do it. Two, two a week equals 96. Anyone here doing 96 sessions? Nope. Cassie, maybe, nearly. Nathan won't be far off. There are people, we probably have a dozen, I don't know, not even a dozen, but there's like people that, well, maybe that do over a hundred. That's good volume. There's not many people in it. You're in the top 0.5% of the industry if you're doing over a hundred sessions a week. Most people are like, how do you do a hundred sessions a week, Simon? You can't even do that in, on your own. Exactly. You can't do it on your own, right? So one percenters. Let's have a little, little bit of a look at these guys and then the compounding. I'm, always, I'm also going to talk about here in a second. I'm going to actually leave a note for myself. To don't be confined by the wall of a ballpoint pen. Wait until you hear this motherfucker. This is powerful. So what do we got? Journal in the evening instead of just the mornings. Awesome, that's a one percenter. That right, see, cause he, I even look at that from Nate and I go, fuck is the point in that? Exactly, it's a one percenter. It's, it's guys, some, everything, right? In, a, in the one percent bracket is easy to do but also not to do, right? Does that make sense? Don't ignore the Fletch, we talked about this on Friday in Leverage, right? Getting up, that two-hour window, man. Like I said to you, bro, like, man, I've been getting up early. Man. I've been voxering every day this weekend. I was said this morning, I'm having a lion. I was up at five, man, sharp, I done, hustle. God, I'm on at the moment. I'm razor sharp, razor sharp. And it's just small things that enable you to do that. But what we were talking about, it's getting up early, do the shit you hate. Like, even if you only do one of those things, man, if you've got a list of 10 things that you hate, if you do one of them a day, Fletch, not even every day, take the fucking weekends off. In two weeks, they'll all be done. Two weeks? Like, I mean, like, time flies, guys. 
And when you start looking at all these other things, such as like, you, you realize how many jelly beans you have, which are days that represent your life until you die. Like, I hate talking about death, guys, but fuck me. When you're slapped in the face with that shit, it makes you want to go and fucking hustle. If you've got a purpose, if you've got something to work towards, which we all do. So the journaling is a really good example of the 1%. Um, aim for one more person to check in each week. Solid 1%. That's a solid do you know how easy you'll be though, Ray? And this is the good thing, right? If you are at such a small scale, it's all coming back to me. I'm on today, guys. If you are, if you've got a lot of money, you've got a lot to lose if you're an investor, right? If you're a business owner with less than 20 clients, so solid level, right? But it's not, it's not a big business. It's small business. You know how good that is because you have nothing to lose. The less you have, the less you have to lose. This is why people in the world today, guys, should all be fucking crushing it. I'm not joking. The amount of people that I speak to that have fucking nothing to lose. They cannot lose anything. And the worst position is, right, to be in is where you actually have the opportunity, finances, time, the tick of approval from your fucking partner who wants you to look better naked, but you use it as an excuse that they don't because they can't do, you don't want to do PT badly enough. You've got all the green ticks to actually start, but you don't. I, I like, I honestly, like, I feel sorry for those people, but it's, at the same time, you can't invest. Like I always say, guys, to you, don't care about your clients or your prospects goals more than yourself, uh, they're, more than they do themselves, right? So, that's that. Now let's go back to this chat here. Um, I can't wait to tell you about the ballpoint pen. That's going to kickstart B, me and you in our conversation. Wait till you hear this motherfucker. You're going to want to run in that gym. So journaling, love it. Cassie, setting up trainer eyes, love it. Here's the thing, Cassie, as well, right? Like I said before, we don't want to make mountains out of molehills, but a task like that will seem like a mountain. So therefore, in the audience, a lot of people ask Steve, Right. Or this is at another event I was at. How do you get over these big tasks? It was, it's guys, when you go and see these things, they get boring after a while. I did a two day event for a freaking 15 minute chat. That's what I went there for. I had to wait right until the end, right until the end. I did a 15 minute chat, got a photo with the guy, paid 10 grand to go and see him again and then walked out. But I had to go there for two days to go and do that shit. Right. Don't make mountains out of molehills. But if you've got a mountain esque task, how do you chop it down? How do you chop it down? Well, you start with by doing 1%. Sign up for it, right? That's why I say to people with school, there's the training. Go and get it done, right? Once you sign up to it, you've got accountability. Like I always say that accountability, guys, simple. Your bank balance is always going to be your biggest form of accountability. Most people will, will not go ahead with train rides, not go ahead with school because they're like, fuck, 150 bucks a month. Well, what you used to earn 10 bucks a week and now you're making two and a half grand. What like invest, right? Again, you've got the tick of approval. It's not a financial thing. Do it. Where there's resistance, there's reward. Always. Always. And I said that to B this morning, I think, in our face in our school chat. Like there's resistance there naturally. Do you know what I mean? Like it's this is if there's a resistance, there's reward. Um, so set up trainer wise, just take the first leap, Cass. And uh, yours last week was getting up earlier. Let me have a little look here. Someone just put something else. Yeah. Uh, to get these shit tasks done. Like this is that that one there. I think we've had a really good one. So we've got a, a big one that we need to break down. Nathan's got and Ray have got really good one percenters. Fletcher's. Anything that's remember, anything that's easy to do is easy not to do. It's also very easy not to get out of bed. I actually tell a lie. I wasn't up at five today. I was up at 542. I remember it, right? But I said to myself, I do need to rest because it's been it's been a minute since I've fucking stopped at the moment. But I love being on the go. So with that, Fletch, get up, but then give yourself the one set that what is the what name one task that you're avoiding right now, bro? What what would it be? Just speak. Um, it's just school. Yeah. School, cool. What part of school? Um, even just writing out the uh, powerpoints and shit. Okay, so again, this is like this is a Cassie esque mountain task, right? School train rides, I'd call them ten percent. They're not one percent. They are they they do carry weight. They carry they carry they carry manual man hours. Do you know how freaking wrapped I am to say that I've completed Pinnacle? 
But remember when I told you guys this is going to take me six months? Ironically, we're fucking here. But why are we here? Because I did the 1%, the, the 50 PowerPoint presentations, each one of them, 2%. 2%, 2%, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. You know your two times table. You know how it goes, right? So for you, Fletch, what part of it? The PowerPoint? Um, well, I'll give you a bit of example. It's just like yeah, give us one. Just yeah. going through like emails and shit. Um, I've got service agreements from NDIS clients that I've got to make up and shit. And it's just, yeah, yeah. Take me two seconds, to, yeah, 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 perfect. Keep yeah. going, bro. Keep going, yeah. And it's, yeah, doing like invoices for the NDIS, like that's how I get paid, <laughs> like, why do I put it off, right? Yeah. Which pay you, yeah. it pays yeah. you, but you won't. Do that's the sign of someone who is like, honestly, that's the sign of someone. And guys, I'm going to post this in the group. This is perfect for the this conversation today. I'm going to post this as a training about fucking wait, how to wake up, right? Doing shit that pays you that you're not even doing. You, you've given the service, right? In advance. I need to now get paid for it. Oh, fuck that shit. Got enough cash flow. All right. Do you, like, do you know what, like... Now, guys, I'm exactly the same as that. I'm, this is the thing as well. Now, it's obviously great to get Simon in a mood like this, fresh, motivated af after a, a couple of events or whatever, but we're all the same. I said to B before, before we hit record, if you told me to go and get a nine to five job tomorrow, right, which you could never make me do, like put a gun to my head, I'd probably rather die. But like, and it's not being horrible. It's just re relative to the position that everyone's in, Right. I'd be shitting myself, even though I know you, you could put, and I, man, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. Some of you guys are frick. Well, all of you guys are fucking amazing at something. If you went into a nine to five, right? If you went into a nine to five guys, you could probably get paid hundred grand, 200 grand plus a lot of you guys for something that you're phenomenal at. Like Ray, you could probably go in and direct an organization of cleaners and be a CEO of that shit. Why? Oh, oh hang on a second. Because you fucking ran your own one, which did that fucking turnover and more. Right? You're, you're, you're too, you're, you're, like, like what I say about my wife, and it pains me every day to see her in a job that she's bored with, collecting a very good paycheck. Bored. Like, you're unemployable. Think about that. You're unemployable. But if you're unemployable, you have to deal with the one percenters. You don't go to work, cover over the cracks. That's the worst shit people do. They put they, they, there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a big void here. Yeah, oh yeah, this, can't see that anymore, right? Fuck that. If you do, you know what happens underneath that, right? What happens when water goes into a crack, covers it, and it freezes? It fucking expands. That's what it does. So, with that being said, guys, if you do that, you will have voids. It, and they will turn into mountains in your business. And I don't give a shit what anyone says. Like, I've seen people very close to me not give a shit about one percenters. And it does form big voids. You don't want to be a part of that. So that's that. Now, I'm going to talk about the ballpoint pen. And I'm going to next go into Beatrice and your, your move, right? Guys, type this in on YouTube, all right? If you want to watch it, there'll be a video somewhere, all right, about... The experiment that was done, this is this is powerful, guys, right? And I'll tell you what, I'll actually do it. It's the experiment that they did with a ballpoint pen, which I've got here. Uh, and I'm going to do live training with you guys. No screen share, just raw in the flesh with my son's half-ripped piece of paper. I'll get a fresh one for you. So the ballpoint pen and, how, pen and how you cannot be confined by the rules of one, or how, hang on, let me rephrase, how most people are, but you fucking shouldn't be. Right. So there's an experiment. Imagine on here, and this is like flat, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to put it up like this. Right. Imagine on here, you've got a circle. Right. This is power. Stephen Bartlett, if you're out there listening to me, brother, I'm doing you a solid. All right. Here we go. The circle inside that circle, there's a fly. Right. Or a little, sorry, little mini spider. Right. Now, what they did. Does anyone, if anyone knows where I'm going with this, apart from Nate, I know you know, but if anyone's seen this before, let me know, right? What they did, they did an experiment where they put a fly inside this piece of paper, or a little spider, sorry, inside here. And it was freaking phenomenal to see that what happened was 
is that the spiders start like walking around and it was a little mini like little ninja one it was quite fast and it would go to the edge and it would go fuck that shit and turn around and it would go like this right turn around turn around right to the edge turn around and this the experiment proved that if there's a void or if there's a line there which again guys is this a wall let me i'm just trying to hold it flat is that a wall no is that though however a wall in your head if you were to look at it and you were inside that would it mentally create a barrier for you yes now this spider never left the wall right never left it and i was like i could kind of see where it was going at that point however what they then did is this they put the fly or the spider sorry on a blank piece of paper spider kept going around like this and what they kept doing is they kept drawing little lines like this right and i'll just draw a few right just so I can hold it up. What they did is they kept doing this. So it created like a maze and this fly would be like buzzing around and hit that. And then like, but it would go here. The fly would be coming across like this. And then they would draw a little line like that, right? And cut the fly off. Now what this little spider slash fly did is turn around. They kept doing it until there was that many lines on the page until eventually, what do you think happened, guys? Someone speak. What do you think happened? There was that many he stopped. He stopped. Incorrect. Think about it. Now you're drawing all these things manually. It's, this is powerful. When you hear the kicker, it's powerful. You draw so many of these things that imagine if you went to this one here, right? Turned around. What do you think accidentally happened? This is an oh, existing... He, he crossed the line. This little fucking spider, I'm not joking, guys. <laughs> it's an organism. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a being. The spider crossed the line, stopped temporarily, and then continued on his journey. Stop, actually stopped, as if to say, what the... Oh, that's not that bad. He kept going. They kept drawing, they kept drawing lines in front of this little motherfucker, and what did the thing keep doing? Going straight over the top of it. That there gives me goosebumps. I don't know about you, but don't ever be confined by the wall of a ballpoint pen, right? Mentally, when you go through things in life, you're going to be given resistance, which is where we're going to go down with B at the moment. Because she said to me, so I'm going to read what, exactly what she said to me. You don't mind if I read it out, Bedia? It's, it's natural. It's, it's not... Uh, she won't mind. I'm reading it anyway. She says... Where are we at? She said, I'm so nervous about starting at Snap for some reason, but I would like to put an action plan in place for that. Naturally, you're going to be confined by the walls of something which you think is big. Now, for, for Fletch, like we're working through a lot of it with leverage. I know, although we're on a timeline and that timeline is going to pan out and he's going to get his qualifications, we're going to hire him. But at the start, you remember at the start, bro? There's a little, like, even though you jumped at the opportunity, which is what a lot of wise people will do, there's still a lot of questions. There's a lot of nerves, right? Exact message to Simon before. Say again? Like, I've sent you that exact message before. Right? Exactly the same message, yeah. right? Nathan, last week, right? In a leverage webinar, we brought this up. I said, because in the leverage webinar, what I do is I individually coach these guys. So Fletcher, Cassie, and Nathan, they're there. I'm 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 a little bit annoyed there's not more people on this one today, but I'm gonna really, really, really push this webinar recording today. It's powerful for a lot of people. But what we talk about in there is like live coaching. So I'll set you specific action items that I want you to do. And it's not just Nathan and me holding each other accountable here. Fletcher is also listening to that. Cassie is also listening to that. Be the equivalence of B's and Rays, of, of which at some point you come into that webinar, you come into that boardroom, you will see. The higher level accountability that these guys get from me for the higher level of coaching that they need to get to the higher level of businesses. What you don't have is just Simon holding you accountable. Fletcher and Cassie know that Nathan, who said, I want to hire a, and he won't mind me saying this, who I want to hire another trainer when I hire, when I sign three to four more clients up, right? They are also holding him accountable. We've all agreed and we have this little pact. I always say, guys, we're family here. Speak your mind. Because if you're not moving forward and you've got leverage, there's a problem. It's either in here 
right? Or something you need, which you need to communicate. It's that simple. Like the, there's no, like the first hundred grand that you make guys is the hardest. Going from a million to 10 million is fucking easy to an extent, as long as you're coached by a millionaire, right? Like yeah. myself. And that's not blunt. I'm just being honest. I am a multimillionaire. And with that being said, Nathan turned around a week later after we set those action items and said, yeah, I uh, just signed three clients. So I uh, just want to go and get a couple more. And at the time I said, okay. And then later on, I think in that webinar, someone else spoke and I got my little blunt uh, hat, hat on. And I said, if you want me to be really honest, I'm going to use Nathan as, a, as an example. Nathan is backing away from something naturally because he's being confined by the wall of a ballpoint pen. And this motherfucker, Nathan, by the way, guys, he has hired multiple trainers in multiple gyms and made multiple six figures more than once. And it is still natural that you are confined by the wall of a ballpoint pen of which when you walk over, you realize it really was not that bad. You can clap now, guys, by the way, for my speech. Um, guys, they said that at the weekend. I was like, I was like, yeah, that was good. That was good. Uh, there you go. Woo! Um, guys, does that make sense? I love that little analogy. So B, don't be the little spider here. Just walk over the first fucking line that's drawn, right? I'm telling you right now, and I'm going to now give you some direct personal training coaching, right? Tan, good to see you. It's a very, very deep webinar you've come into this one today. It's great. Um, but don't ever be confined by the walls of a ballpoint pen. And that was probably the most powerful message I took away from the whole uh, from the whole weekend. And um, yeah, so that is that. Questions on that one, guys? Any questions? Makes sense though, right? Cool. All right, cool. Um, okay, so B, what do you do when you go into a new gym? Well, B, can you just give us a bit of a rundown of where you're up to, what you're doing currently in the business and to get into the second location of which you already work there as a receptionist? Assistant manager. An AM is yeah. easy when you know how. So give us a rundown of what you would do and I'll show you exactly what to do next. So where I currently am at Good Life or? Nope. Snap. Snap, okay. Well, at Snap, I basically just do a mix of reception and sales. Yep. So I'm already selling PT packs for the current PTs. Um, that's the only thing that I need to figure out with my manager is kind of where the like that's why I'm nervous because I don't want to step on anyone's toes because I know I'll have more access than the yeah. other the other PTs and are I are you nervous about that or are you afraid that you will dominate by having that well I know that my do you care about the other PTs a... or yourself more well a I care about everyone I know you do, darling. You're a very you're you're a, you're a gentle soul, but no, you're right. At the end of the day, I'm not going to say to you, sell the PT packs to keep the gym happy, and you keep all of them. They're not going to like that, right? They're not going to yeah, like that. My, my managers already like kind of told me before, like that I need to be more even with the PT packs because I already like give a few more to certain trainers. Oh, so you favoritize people just like PTMs do in clubs. Is that right? Well, kind of. Yeah, but, exactly. uh, this game's real, right? This game is real. Tanya knows what's going on here, right? <laughs> I'm sure everyone else does too. Nathan and Cassie definitely fucking know. So, like, look, how do we do it? Look, first and foremost, I would take a completely different approach, all right? We have a strategy called the booked before you begin strategy, if you yeah. run this strategy, because what you need to do positioned as an assistant manager is you need to work with the manager so that you can still do the assistant. Yeah, and manager. I have a good relationship with him. So that's also like, I would like to keep that good yeah. and not step on anyone's toes. 100%. So look, what I recommend is you do, um, go, have you got the marketing section unlocked? Yes. Go into that, go into Bulk Blast and look at the book before you begin strategy. I'm not going to discuss it now because it's a public forum webinar, this one, but watch the strategy. You will know exactly what to, it's everything. Everything of about what I'm about to say is inside the train. All the right. Big book last one. Not the big. Oh, uh, sorry. I. I'll show you. Yeah. Uh, uh, last week's leverage webinar guys was a cracker as well, by the way. And that is uploaded now into the leverage section. Um, 
It is. In, it should be. I think it's just called bolt blasts. The bolt. Yeah, bolt blast strategy. Okay. See inside there. If you scroll down, it's got like act fast, bolt blast, but but before you begin, yeah. MIA and birthday. Watch the training and look at. Just watch the lot. I would watch the lot. Yeah. Training's twenty four minutes long. Like again, that there guy is one percent. Oh. Fucking gotta watch a 24 minute video. Wake the fuck up and watch that shit. I mean, you guys are this is a good bunch of clients here today, right? Of which Fletch, Nath, Cassie, Tan. I feel like Fletch, I feel Fletch has been with us for years. That's how well I know you, brother. Love you, man. With that being said, um, Tan, Nath, Cass, Ray worked with for a long time. Um, the amount of times you guys hear me say to people, you, you know what I'm about to I watch the content. You know what I say to people like, yeah, I haven't watched the content yet. Uh, ironically as well, B, we were one of them before, right? Like watch it, just watch the content. It's a 1%. Compound watching 50 videos, you'll probably be ironically fully booked and leveraged. Like it can't, when you've got a coaching program like this at Pinnacle, guys, like I don't need to go down a rabbit hole with it, but the guy that I spoke to yesterday this event is a coach called JT Fox. Uh, this guy is a blunt motherfucker, right? I'm telling you. He is so far up his ass. It was like me, but on 10x, right? 100x. I I'm not far up my ass. But one thing I will tell you is that I am very proud and confident knowing that we have the best platform in the country of Australia and more than likely in the world for face-to-face -face rental trainers in gyms hands down, period, especially when it comes to a level of customer service, customer care, working one on one with the fucking goat. And that's me. So I will give myself some fucking credit because I am the goat. And it's that simple. You have everything. You have everything. So compound watching the content, but watch that one. But before you begin, B, but then what we need to do there as well is we just got to make sure that you're keeping the relationship sweet inside the gym, right? Yeah. You've got to keep them sweet inside the gym so that you're delegating correctly the PT packs. Now, do you have uh, KPIs on the PT pack volume that you have to sell? No, not on PT packs. I don't really have targets on anything like I do. I own commission, but there's no targets really. It just... Right. So how much the PT packs? I mean, I haven't been selling many recently. Everything's been quite dry recently. And that's also one reason why I'm a bit nervous is because they aren't the... I don't know, there doesn't seem to be a big PT market there, but maybe it is and it's just not being a lot of people used stuff like properly. That. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah, like I probably haven't sold a PT pack for around a month. I've made sales, but not PT packs. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Um, with that being said, um, yeah, that's exactly right, Nate. That's a very, very good point. You make the market. Right. You you make the market. That's powerful, Nate. Well said. That's what I, that is what I was thinking. Like because I know all the PTs that are there now. Right. None of them are there full time. None right. of them. Uh, are, in. Yeah, none, go, Nate. Shoot, brother. Shoot. None of them are. Oh, sorry. Uh, go so on, you're right. You finished, Beatrice. You're no, finished. no, no, be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, none of them are probably there even five days a week. I see some of them like twice a month. So I know that there is opportunity in that sense that not a lot of the PTs are there very often. So a bit of feedback about my situation. So I said from, uh, uh, well, Jeremy, where I had um, lots in abundance, but anyway, the location I'm at now is got group instructors here. So with the members of the gym, they get given a program as part of their membership so anyone um any pt would look into this gym and be like no nah, there's no market here at all because you're walking into a gym you get given everything that you would essentially need then they get six weeks catch up with their group instructors here every six weeks has progress going cool so they're getting you know, very accountability in a limited term but something anyone that doesn't know what they're doing would walk into the place but like no nah, no nah, it's you're going to just fail 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 as a pt but then, you yeah, know, obviously, again, without throwing steam up my ass, I came here with the methods, with the systems, blah, 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 and I'm ready to leverage. Like, I need another PT to bring on board because created the the need for a PT, created the market. So people don't think they need one when you give them a service, provide what, you know, a, a 
new value point and a premium value point. Now everyone's like, no, I want to work with that. And no, I want that. That wasn't a part of what I could get now, but I want that now because it's offered and I've shown the value. And yeah, now I've, I've built the, the value, built the need for, for it in this new facility. So don't think there's not a market. You've just got to create it. Yeah. Thank you. That's really, 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 really well said, Nath. And I know, I know for a fact that we we're, we're making moves, brother, now as well. So I'm proud of you. And uh, again, you are one of the goats, dude. So let's go lead by example here, right? Beatrice, darling, B, right? You will be successful in that gym. I want everyone to just remember the industry that we are in. The PT industry just happens to have a higher dropout rate within the first year, right? Six, 12, six to 12 months. I think it's about eight months on average where 80% of people, right? Six to eight months, whatever it is. 80% of people drop out. You've got to remember, B, we are not part of that. Here, yeah. you have everything you need to succeed. One of the one percenters that you need mentally, and this is for every single person who watches this as well, inside the PT Business Blueprint, because this is becoming a training. This is a great webinar today. A lot of really, really good stuff that will help people come over uh, or overcome resistance, procrastination, paralysis, right? Is you need to remember that the rest of your competition is shit. Let me say it again. The rest of your competition in this industry is shit. In this country, this country is filled with so much potential and people don't recognize it. They think that because other people are in the fitness industry specifically, right, that I'm talking about now, because other people are doing shit in this space, right, that you too will follow suit. Remember, your competition is shit. I can't say that loud enough, guys. My, most of the time. Now, are there, are there successful people in this industry? Fuck yeah. We've created a lot of them. Are there other people that don't work with us that are successful? Of course. There's a lot of them, right? It's not like... The GOAT is the only person. You have to come work with Simon to go and become great. No, you don't. This, that's just being, that's being, that's being arrogant. There are lots of successful trainers in this industry. However, most of them are shit. So, we're, and it's not their fault. So disclaimer, it's not your fault. If you're, in, if you're watching this, you're built to be here because they don't educate you sales, marketing, systems, and structures. Now think about it, guys. If you have, sales, marketing systems and structures, right? And you're still not happy with where you are. All you've got to do, it's called look in a fucking mirror and ask yourself what you're doing, right? That's all it is. Don't come and blame me, whatever you do, right? It's that simple. Don't blame Nate. don't blame Tarkin, don't blame me and my team. Look at yourself in the mirror. That's all it is. So with that being said, B, go in there. Let's do, I think, book before you begin, but if you like the PT packs, if you're not on KPIs, I wouldn't I wouldn't push them. If you are an assistant manager, B, you have you are the equivalent of your PTM in good life. That's what you are in there. Book yeah. people, I'm telling you, new gym members equals new PT clients. That's all you've got to do. Yeah. And, and this is what I will say, which is marketing, but put it on the record for people that watch this. If you are in a club, one of the very few things that you need to do in order to become fully booked and to make between six figures and 150K per year. So 100 to 150K per year is capitalize on new member foot traffic. That's the only thing you need to do. How you do that, I'm going to say for these guys, right? But if you're watching, that's a big, that's the biggest secret I can ever give you. Capitalize on new member foot traffic, spend time in the four walls of your own gym, not the four walls of one of these fucking things. And that's it. Don't sit at home being lazy. Go and spend, go and sit and scroll on your fucking phones, right? Everyone out there in the gym. Do it in the fucking gym. Don't sit with your freaking you know what in your hand doing it on your couch. There's no point. Get in the gym. So for us, do like the think about it like this, B. You're going to be positioned in there. Do you sell memberships? Yeah. Of course you do. So from yeah. there, you convert straight away into two part kickstart, right? When suits you best, morning or evening. Here at Snap, what we want to do is get everyone's gym journey off to the best possible start because we care about our members more than anyone else. When suits you best to kickstart your journey, morning or evening. I cannot make it more fluent and 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 flushed than that, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to me? Yes. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, guys, I think that is the two things I wanted to discuss there. Um, well, we did three. 
So it's mainly, but main, the main two, but one percenters and also don't be confined by the walls of a ballpoint pen, right? And it's that simple, right? Are there any questions here whatsoever about anything? So shoot, guys, if there's any questions about anything whatsoever. Otherwise, it means that I know that you should be happy and you should be growing your business this week. I have to run away now, but I'm going to message you. You message me down, whatever you need. And, and again, guys, you know I'm here for you. I, I was speaking to another fellow um, business owner um, in the industry, but not in the PT space this morning. And I just said one of the reasons why we are the most established and recognized and successful coaching platforms, if not the, in the country. And, I, and when I say that, guys, as well, it's not arrogance. It's just the truth. Like there's a reason why we're, we're here and we have clients like Nathan stick for six years why we have people from trainer HQ so if anyone's watched this shit that, that they put out about me which is now taken down because I had to go and intervene myself um, that leave that coaching organization and come to us there's a fucking reason why and with that being said guy, I'm here, guys I'm here for you all any single time you need you just come to me and with that being said if you are watching this video and you're still here watching it on record if you need help with your PT business right you know where to turn guys don't take your hand off the wheel, Tan, but anyone else here, would it be wise to come and join this awesome community if you were stuck, just like Fletcher was? Yeah, just like Tanya was. These guys doing 100 to $200 each per week now do thousands. Nathan Tinge, don't even get me started about what that guy's created. Guys, I love you all. I'm going to be on some next level shit this week, so be prepared. Strap yourself in for these webinars, and uh, I'll speak to you all soon. Peace and love.